Hey everyone, welcome to this video. And in this video, I'm joined by Mr. David Burke from The Electron Shop. Hey David, how are you doing? Hello. So in this video, I want to talk, uh, David and I are going to have a bit of a chat and I want to really learn from you, David, um, about your journey and your transition moving your team to Asana. Because I know that some companies um, can struggle with the transition, you know, changing how their teams communi communicate, how they manage their work. It's, it's not always easy to make that transition. So I'm really interested to hear your take on kind of your experience with that. So maybe to kick things off, do you want to give us a bit of background context around like before you guys were using Asana, what did your workflow look like? Were you using any other tools or what were the, you know, what, how, how did you kind of tell us the story? How did, you, how did you get into Asana? Yeah. <laughs> That's a great question. Well, um, you know, we tried a couple of products, actually. We tried Teamwork, um, and we tried Trello. And, uh, and then we decided that Slack was working really well for us, so we started managing everything through Slack. But it got to be too much, and people were randomly dashing off assignments, and you know, was unsure if people could track whether they were still in the queue or done. So um, we took a look at Asana, and in my first review of Asana, what I liked the most was the flexibility. It is really, really flexible. That's a plus and a minus because it's a plus because it's really flexible. It's a minus because people tend to go rogue and use it their own way. Yeah. So uh, that's how we chose it. Um, so yeah, go ahead. Let's keep going. Yeah. So the flexibility. So when you talk about flexibility, it's kind of what you mean is like, there's lots of different ways you can use it. It's I, and one of the things I found is like, you don't just have to manage tasks in it, like things you can do. You could actually use it to manage clients or support tickets from a customer service point of view. Um, so yeah, I, I agree. Like it's one of those very flexible platforms. Yeah. I would say that also, um, our, project management methodology, um, having been in the agency business for many years, mm. is very much um, sort of around the basics of getting things done by data. Yeah. Yeah. And this idea of having a platform that allows you to reduce everything to a unit of work with a person responsible was really what we were after. Okay. And so in your experience, the other tools that you tried, Trello, you mentioned a few others, they, they just didn't quite tick that box then in terms of making it very clear who was responsible for what? There were those issues and then there were presentation issues. Uh, okay. So the idea that in Asana, you could look at a list, a calendar, and use the advanced search and then save the search was just unparalleled relative to other products. Okay. That, actually, that was going to be one of my questions. Like, was there any, you mentioned the flexibility, but was there any key feature that really sold you on it? Um, was the, the advanced search, was, sounds like one of those? The advanced search, absolutely. Okay. Okay. And, and regarding the transition, you know, moving your team to Asana, I know that you've got a little bit of an advantage in that you're on a, you have a smaller team, which obviously makes the transition a bit easier to manage, but what were the, um, what were the kind of common challenges or issues that you faced during that transition? And then part B, if you want to answer that as well is then how did you manage those? How did you iron out those flaws? I think a lot of it is very common change management um, issues. So number one, broadcasting early and often that in 30 days, we're changing. Right. Every day for those 30 days. What are we changing to? We're changing to a sauna. You might want to check it out, right? Letting people sort of do it on their terms. Um, and then, uh, as you know, we hired Paul. Um, and that was really good. You know, I am fond of saying, you know, when you're, uh, you know, in uncharted territory, hire a guy, it's worth it, right? Local knowledge is worth a lot. Um, so for very effective investment, basically, Paul, you provided us with a framework and a methodology. I took your framework and methodology, and then I drafted several documents the two most important of those documents. So first of all, you trained us, we taped that training. Any new employee that comes in watches a one hour training. Mm -hmm. Number two, I did a document called Using Asana the Electron Shop Way. And that covers all the idiosyncrasies of how we use it. 
And then the third document was the file naming system at the electron shop. So every file has prepended a client name and has date in a certain format at the end of the file name and then a version number. It gets complicated, but the version number is has a client seen this and then internal revs. So 1.1 would be client saw 1.0, we internally rev to 1.1. And this really helps us track the most recent file. That's really interesting. I, I want to back up a little bit to something you said at the beginning. So you said you had like this, this definitive start date in 30 days. Mm -hmm. we're, we're using Asana. Mm -hmm. What did you do during the transition? Were you using it a little bit and it was kind of, you were trying to pull people into it? Um, why did you choose, how did that kind of look and why did you choose to do it that way instead of just saying, right, starting today, we're doing it? Yeah, talk me through that a little bit more. Well, I got the free version, which is wonderful for teams under 15. Um, and I pulled people in one by one. And I also did demos um, okay. like once a week, just we were on a production call or something. And I would say, oh, let me show you something. I found this interesting thing. Remember also that, um, you know, I, like you, Paul, I'm interested in productivity and efficiency. Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of time in the, in the system experimenting with my partner, right? Just the two of us assigning tasks to each other and, you know, starting to play with all the various systems. Um, you know, we sort of figured out sections on our own, but that was uh, not easy to find. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's really interesting. Because I think um, from the experiences I've had working with different companies, as well as companies I've been part of where we've used Asana, there's been that almost like a, okay, or the, that, that communication element that you've said to your team, like, guys, we're using this in 30 days, maybe hasn't been so clear. And it's just like, you kind of soft roll it out and you kind of start today and try and get people using it. And then when people don't fully adopt it because it's new and it's scary and it challenges the way they work, they kind of, it, it fizzles out and maybe the adoption isn't as successful because that, that, that clear expectation wasn't made. But it sounds like in your case, you made it very clear, guys, we're using this, get on the train because it's leaving soon, um, which sounds like it worked really well. That's right. It did. And I will tell you one other thing. So yeah, I started uh, basically putting people in the system, letting them fool around. Um, and I also said, um, starting on this date, if you send me something via email, I'm not going to answer. Oh, okay. And how did that, how did that play out? Did, did you, were people pretty good at like getting into a sun or did you still get a few emails? It took about a month. Um, about a month. You know, there, we also use Slack. So Slack and email, everybody was confused. How do we use these things? That's one of the things that's in, how do we use Asana the Electron Shop way? Yeah. Um, and so we, you know, I started sort of delineating. Asana is the system of record. Slack is for checking in. Email is for things with clients. That's it. Okay, so I want to recap because that's really important. And actually you address something <clears throat> that I think a lot of people get hung up about is like, how does this fit in? There's so many tools now. If someone emails me Slack, where do I check for these points of communication? And I think it sounds like what you've done really well is have clear divisions of what goes where. So you said email is for clients only, pretty much external communication. Slack or Asana is, sorry, how, can you talk to me? Do you do all your communication in Asana and just like informal communication in Slack or how do the two work there? All communication in Asana <coughs> relevant to tasks. Um, right. Slack, what we do is, we, it's a sort of thing like, I'm on the phone, can you tell me this number? Or, right. sorry, I forgot where this file was, it's not in Asana, can you point me at that file? That kind of thing. It's just for brief check-in. It's got to be like a 30-second thing. So, you know, my rule is to sort of, um, you know, what we're trying to do is get things down to units of work that take like two to five minutes, right? Slack is a 30-second tool. Mm -hmm. That's really good. And I think that's a really good way to divide it is say, look, if there's any communication that needs to happen about work, which in internally in a team that's probably going to be the majority of your communication, like 80% of your communication. So it should live in Asana because it's tied to tasks. It's tied to things you need to do. Whereas Slack is the informal 
quick communication tool that you can use to quickly get an answer or check in with someone. So I think that's a really good way, really smart way to divide the two so that you're not stuck in this transition or this blurry area where you're not sure, did David send me that in Slack or did he send me in Asana? You should just kind of know. <clears throat> I think a couple other things about that. You know, one is <clears throat> I said that email is for client communication, right? External communication. If there's a task, if a client writes me, which is every day, and they say, could you please do, you know, change this, do that, and fix this typo. I take that and I put it in Slack, either as separate tasks or yeah. one task saying, you know, please complete fixes and then paste the email into Asana. Why? Because the key thing about Asana that's wonderful is it's all about accountability, right? Yeah. You can't shirk it. They're assigned a task and you need to either do it or reassign it or get it off your plate. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. It's very transparent, like who's keeping up and maybe because and, you can just click on someone's account and see exactly how much they've got going on. Um, there's no hiding. It's, it's, I think some people may even find it a little bit scary. They're like, oh gosh, I need to pick up my game because everyone can see what I'm doing. Yeah, I think it's very good. Yeah. Well, we have a weekly uh, production meeting, and that production meeting consists of a budget review, which is done in Harvest. Okay. Where are we on, in terms of hours on various accounts? The rest of the meeting is basically all incomplete tasks in Asana. We go really? through one by one. And uh, also, I have saved searches for every employee. Incomplete tasks for tasks for so-and-so. So when I talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, I can say, I see that this one's stuck or, you know, maybe you have too much work to do. There's a lot of insight that comes from it as well. Actually, that was going to be one of my questions, which I think segues quite nicely. So it's what are the business problems that you've solved with Asana? And it sounds like that could be one of them where as a, as a manager, as a, as a leader, you can just, it's not about calling people out and saying you're not doing your job. It's about, as you've said, like, where are you getting stuck? How can I help you? How can I help you move these tasks forward? Um, and Asana is what provides you with that, with that um, transparency. That's right. There's a larger uh, issue at play, I think, that's really important. Um, and that is engagement, employee engagement. So, you know, when everybody is updating their tasks and nothing is overdue, uh, people know that everybody's engaged and everybody's doing the business and the business is as strong as the weakest link. Yeah. If someone is consistently letting their tasks slide past the due date. So every week on, during our production meeting, I also look at it. And even before I start the meeting, I say, okay, I'm assuming everybody's updated the due dates on the tasks. Yeah. So it, it sends a big message about engagement. So accountability again is very important. And, um, you know, in my, personal philosophy, accountability is actually a very positive thing for organizations because people don't like it when someone's sitting around being lazy. Yeah. Yeah. I, you're totally right. You know, as an employee, not just the managers, but the employees as well, they feel hard done by because it's like, Hey, this guy over here, he's not doing his job and I'm working, working my ass off. Yeah. So I, um, that's really interesting. Do you, were there any, were there any other significant like business problems that you solved with Asana that you can think of? Um, version control on files. Um, so uh, we insist that if you update a version of a file, that you delete the one that's attached to the task and attach the most recent one. Right. So it's always there. So that was a big one. Um, and I think um, this idea of employee performance and resource allocation, there are many indicators of that within the system. So I would say those were the major problems. You know, we are probably, uh, I'm gonna guess 20% more efficient in productivity because of the system, because everybody knows what's hanging out there and they don't, you know, they don't wait around for you to tell them to do something. There's a whole list, right? Yeah, yeah go pick something, yeah, yeah. That's 20%, um, that's not a small number either, yeah. Um, Pretty good. And do you, uh, how do you, you've touched on it a bit with like your client work and things, but what kinds of work do you, do you track in Asana? I mean, you've obviously got the client side. It's really important. Um, in terms of like your business planning and, and business, business projects, so working on your business rather than in your business. Can you talk about the different kinds of work that you're, that you're currently tracking in Asana? 
or internal projects? Oh, just in general, like if you if you had to think about or talk us through your projects, like yeah, in, in both internal and like um, with clients, like what are the main things that you're using Asana for? Well, so, you know, it goes to the framework that we're using. So let me just talk about that for a second. So, it, you know, I think that the most confusing thing in Asana is the, um, the word teams. Um, because, you know, there's sort of an organization of, an organization, which is the Electron Shop, my company, right? Then we have teams, and our teams are organized around clients, right? Mm -hmm. So we use teams as a client name. And then we have projects, and then we have tasks within the projects. The reason that Asana is good for us is because we're a digital agency. We have multidisciplinary tasks going on. So how do we organize a, an interdisciplinary team with, on a project, right? So the types of projects that we do. And by the way, Paul, I want to tell you, we're going to try out that templates function that just came out. So oh, great. I'm about that. Um, could be website development, could be, uh, you know, a um, weekly email, uh, could be an integrated uh, content calendar, could be, um, you know, blog posts, um, things to write, uh, ads, paid ads. Um, you know, really, it is a, we do a very wide range of things. And again, I said Asana is very flexible. You can pretty much track anything in it, right? Yeah. They say that in their advertising and they're right. That's really good. Well, David, look, thank you so much. It's been really interesting to learn um, of the, yeah, just how you're using it and the challenges you face. Do you have any kind of final, um, like nuggets of advice that you would su suggest to anyone watching, like who's maybe using Asana, they're just onboarding their team at the moment. What would be like your couple of key bits of advice to people getting started in terms of how they can just be more effective with it or, or, or um, get their team using it better? Um, there are uh, two. One you told me, which is turn off email notifications. Oh yeah. But if you're gonna turn off email notifications, then you have to follow this rule. Check your inbox every hour on the hour, right? You cannot forget, just get, yes. let it go. The inbox is the key starting point to everything. When I say that to clients, when I, you know, we're working with clients and they're adopting the system, check your inbox every hour on the hour. They get much better adoption that way. Yeah, great tip. I think it's, that addresses one of the common problems I see people facing, which is they, they're not sure, like, you know, what am I supposed to be doing? Like, what, what am I working on right now? Where is all, where is the latest updates? And it's that inbox. And um, yeah, you can really create a lot of noise and stress for yourself by getting the emails as well. So definitely turning those off and then yeah, archiving those notifications once you're done with them. So your inbox is really only, it only contains or should only contain the active work in progress, like comments that you're still working on or, new, or obviously new, new notifications as well. So great. Thanks for the, thanks for the, the tip, David. Thanks for having me.